All right, my AP Calc champions. In this video, we're gonna be talking about particles. So this problem says a particle P is moving along the X axis. The velocity of particle P at time T is given by V of P of T, which is sine of T to the 1.5 power. For T is between zero and pi. At time T equals zero, particle P is at position X equals five. A second particle q also moves along the x-axis. The velocity of particle q at time t is given by this, also between 0 and pi. At time t equals 0, particle q is at position x equals 10. Find the positions of particles p and q at time t equals 1. So before we jump into this first problem, I think it's important to talk about the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration. We've got position, velocity, acceleration. So if we take the derivative of the position, we get the velocity. We take the derivative of velocity, we get acceleration, okay? Those are related in that direction by the derivative. And then since the opposite of a derivative is an integral, you can you can move from acceleration to velocity by integrating its equation and from velocity to position by integrating that as well. All right, so that should sort of set up this baseline concept of the relationship between these three things. So then if our problem is asking us for the positions at time t equals one, it seems like we're gonna want to do an integral because all that we were given were these velocities. Lucky for us, it also tells us the position at time equals zero for both particle p and q. So if we wanted to find the position at time t equals one, we would just need to take the position at t equals zero and then add it to the integral from zero to one of either p of t or q of t. Let's find the position of particle p first. So the position at t equals zero for particle p is five. And then we add the integral from zero to one of the velocity. So that would be sine of t to the 1.5 power dt p, p at one. So this. So this is equal to 5.371. And then we can apply that same concept to find the position of particle q at time one. So p of q one is equal to, it's at position 10 at time t equals zero. So 10 plus the integral from zero to one of t minus 1.8 times 1.25 t t. And since this is a calculator problem, you can just go ahead and plug this stuff into your calculator. So this is gonna give us 8.564. So those are the two answers for our positions. Moving on to the next problem, we get our particles P and Q moving towards each other or away from each other at time T equals one. Explain your reasoning. Because both of these particles are moving along the X axis, we can use the velocity and more specifically the velocity sign to determine which direction they're moving in. So at time T equals one, we know that our particle P is at 5.371. That's what we determined in the last problem, right? We know that the position of particle Q is at 8.561. So we could label it like this, just so we have a visual. And we can use our uh, velocities at time T equals one to determine which direction P and Q are moving in. So since they're moving along the x-axis, they're either moving forward or they're moving backwards. And the sign of our velocity will tell us which direction they're moving in. So let's go ahead and find the velocity for each of these points at time t equals one. So for P, it would be velocity P of t at one is equal to this equation, sine, of one to the 1.5 power, which is equal to 0 0.841. And then for our Q, V of Q of one is equal to one minus 1.8 times 1.25 first, 
which is equal to minus 1. So remember what I said about comparing the signs of these two uh, velocities. So notice that the velocity of p is positive, so that means it's moving forward along the x-axis. It's moving away from the origin. Our q, on the other hand, it has a negative sign. The negative sign means that it's moving backwards. It's moving towards the origin. Since we have these starting positions, and since particle Q is moving to the left, and particle P has a positive velocity is moving to the right, they're moving towards each other. So we can kind of write that out like, because particle P starts at 5.371 at t equals 1, and has a positive velocity, it is moving to the right. And because particle, particle Q starts at 8.564 at t equals 1, and has a negative velocity, it is moving to the left. So they are moving toward each other. Something like that would work here for this problem. Yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. Here we're being asked to find the acceleration of particle Q at time t equals 1, and then we're being asked if the speed of particle Q is increasing or decreasing at that time. So remember what I said, the how we get from velocity to acceleration, we take the derivative. Basically what we're just going to be finding is V prime at 1. So you can go ahead and just plug that into your calculator. There's no reason for you to actually like solve for the derivative. You can just plug it into your calculator, which would be the same thing as a q of 1, which is equal to 1.027. So we solved the first part of our problem, but now we need to figure out whether the speed is increasing or decreasing. So I think it helps if we sort of relate this to a situation that you and I maybe have encountered in our lives. So we, we know about cars, right? We know that if a car is moving forward, its velocity would be positive, right? But let's say, for example, you're about to hit another car, and so you slam on the brakes, and so your acceleration is negative, right? You're accelerating in the negative direction. As a result, your speed is going to decrease, right? Another situation that might happen is, let's say, you're backing up, so your velocity is negative, and then let's say there's, maybe there's a person walking behind you, and you have to slam on the brakes again. In this case, your car is actually accelerating in the positive direction, and your speed is also decreasing. So why do I bring up these two situations well the whole point is your speed is going to decrease when the velocity and the acceleration have opposite signs and in this situation that's exactly what happens our acceleration is 1.027 so we have a positive acceleration but then we have a negative velocity Right, we solved for that in our last problem. It's minus 1 at t equals 1. So in this case, going off of our car examples, we would say that because the velocity and the acceleration at t equals 1 have opposite signs, the speed of particle Q is decreasing. Moving on to the last problem, we're being asked to find the total distance traveled by particle P over the time interval that T is between 0 and pi. And I've included our velocity again. How do we get from velocity to distance? We take the integral. And then one thing I'd like to point out here is you might be tempted to just write 
0 to pi of sine of t 1.5 to the 1.5 power dt, and then solve for that. This would actually be incorrect. The reason why has to do with the fact that we're calculating the total distance. So if you were to graph uh, this equation on your calculator, you would see that a section of it would be negative. It doesn't matter to us whether the particle is moving forward along the x-axis or backward along the x-axis. All of that is distance that we're going to be adding up. Say for example, I started at my house and I was walking somewhere and then let's say like the store or something I was gonna get like here's my poorly made store I was gonna go to the store to buy avocados and let's say I walked I walked half of the distance and then I realized oh shoot I forgot my wallet so then I walked back to my house to pick up my wallet and then I went to the store again and then I walked back home so just because I had to double back to go back to my house and just because I had to go back to my house from the store doesn't mean that all of these distances are going to cancel out because, you know, I'm retracing my steps. What actually is going to happen is we're going to count this as some distance. Let's call it D divided by 2, the D divided by 2, and then this is D and D. We're going to add all that up. And so the same is true here where we're actually going to want to take the absolute value of sine of t of, to the 1.5 power and then take the integral of that to get our total distance. Because otherwise, what we're going to be doing is instead of finding the area under the curve, what's going to happen is the area under the curve that's below the x-axis of sine of t to the 1.5 power is going to subtract from our area above the x-axis. And we don't want that to happen. We want to find just the total of the area under the curve and add all that up. If we plug this into our calculator, we're going to get that this is 1.931. And that is our answer for D. Hopefully this helps you out with this AP Calculus problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.